It's been quite a tough year for investors, especially those uh, picking stocks, because there was an opportunity earlier in the year to buy in. But were you brave enough to do so? There has been a rally as we go into the back end of the year. But what's it been like for AIM investors? And we're talking now to a portfolio manager who specializes in AIM stocks and those especially for IHT planning purposes. It's Chris Boxall uh, from Fundamental Asset Management. Chris, welcome. Hello. hello. We've spoken over the years a great deal about AIM stocks and, and your, uh, your, your focus in on this particular area. This is a market that's matured a lot, but nonetheless, it still seems to swing violently. When we get a market sell-off, AIM seems to sell off more. Yes. And then when you get opportunities, it seems to swing in the other direction. Um, before we take a look at 2023, which is the purpose of getting together um, at this late part of um, the year, what's 2022 been like in your it's book? It's been a really, really tough year, unfortunately. And I sympathise to those people that have come in they had their first exposure to AIM this year because mm. it's been re really, really tough. I mean, AIM had a pretty good core part of the pandemic, mm. but 2022 has been terribly tough. And if companies have even mildly disappointed, or even those that haven't disappointed at all, you've seen incredible share price weaknesses. And if you, as I say, if you have disappointed, you know, look out because there's just, just been no supporting the shares. It's been really tough. And as a result, I mean, we are more than cautiously optimistic. I mean, you've seen companies sell off a heck of a lot. Well, let, let's, let's look at 2023 in just a minute, but let's look first of all uh, and take a look at the numbers because we've got some comparisons here. I think we can bring up the, the chart to show what's been happening. I mean, this sort of says it all, I suppose, really. But in fact, as at the time of recording, just as we, uh, what, the first week of December, the FTSE is actually now up year to date. But look at that uh, big disparity between AIM, which, Traditionally, has been smaller cap companies, and um, yeah, you're right, the going's tough. Yeah, in context, AIM massively outperformed the FTSE over the, the worst of the pandemic. I mean, having sold off 20%, it was significantly up, whereas the FTSE was down. So it's, it's really been paying catch up, and AIM over a longer period had significantly outperformed. Unfortunately, it's, it's lost all that now on a tough year, and I think you can actually aim align aim as a growth market more with, with more with the nasdaq and the s p where you've seen mm. some pretty big falls not not too far removed from that mm. i mean we saw a bounce in november which was encouraging mm. but ironically the FTSE 100 actually yeah. outperformed aim even in in november and you've seen some very big aim shares you know come up come off a lot which has influenced the the index as mm. well well let's let's take a look at those and uh, talking about the numbers of companies over the period between 2021 and 2022 because things have changed a little bit they have they have and you you've seen this so the number of stocks really haven't fallen that much Eight, 842 this time last year in 21 825 at the end of november market cap of aim has come off a lot from 145 billion this time last year to 98 that's the the market value of all the companies on aim which is probably better than you know, sorry more than many people think aim's worth um hmm. number of Large AIM companies, billion plus AIM companies, now only 19, there were 28. I, it's worth highlighting, this isn't simply because of the declining share prices. You've seen a, some companies, AIM's largest company at the time, ASOS, has now moved to the main market, yeah. an issue. You've seen a lot of takeovers of large AIM companies as well. Um, I think IdeaGen was one that was a billion company that's gone. So you've had several of those which has which have impacted that. But you have also seen some meaningful share price declines. Even at the lower level, you can see now only 337 companies are worth more than 50 million, and compared with 405 in in 2021. And I think the last point there probably highlights an issue for many that the average daily traded volume of AIM companies has dropped so about 30 odd percent um, from 383 to 274. You, you've just seen very little activity in AIM. If, if, if something sells off, there, where are the buyers? There's nothing. And, and I, I, I really fear for open-ended funds managing an AIM because you're, you're having to manage redemptions, which is, causes a circle. Yeah. Uh, and just when you want to be buying, you're then controlling your redemptions. It's a nightmare place to be if you're an open-ended fund manager in AIM. Mm. Uh, touch wood, thankfully, our, our clients have been reasonably patient and, uh, and, and sticky in this tricky time. One of the measurements of success in a certain area of the market is new issues. What about 2022 in terms of new issue um, well, coming you, on you saw a, a number of new issues in 2021. And for example, a huge number of online retail issues mm. 
conveniently listed during a pandemic when they were all doing fantastically, yeah. and now whose business models are, 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 are many of many of them are, are you know found wanting, and new issues in 2022. It's been the lowest year on record for new issues on AIM. I can't see it catching up between now and um, and the end of the end of the year either. So you're going to have a, a a real sort of barren period of new issues, and AIM needs new issues of the right kind. You know, better variety. Um, not simply online retail stories. So mm. I very much hope that AIM picks up in 2022 because we do need some some new blood coming onto onto AIM of, of the right kind. Yeah, good point. Right, making sure it's good quality um, yeah. companies coming on. So what about 2023? How happy do you feel about looking at 2023 as someone that manages other people's money? I think I think our book we're reasonably comfortable. We a lot of our the vast majority of our companies are in a strong net cash position. They've got decent business models. A lot of them have got good visibility, you know, did good decent technology exposure, repeat revenue. So there's some degree of certainty, um, and there's a you know approved outlook to as we say here for quality stocks. Our view is bigger is often best on aim. You've got bigger companies addressing large international markets, or, you know, growth markets, and some of them are growing strongly overseas as well. Weak sterling is good for their business as well, mm-hmm. uh, that they're expanding their distribution overseas. We're seeing an awful lot of buybacks among AIM companies. Um, I can't believe the number what, what, of buybacks. What's generating that and why, why all of a sudden? Well, a lot of them are looking at their share prices and say, well, this is underwater. We've got cash. Why don't we use some of that cash? Where else can we put it to decent use? We buy back, buy back our shares. Um, Which is good for those that hold shares. Because absolutely, yeah. I mean, the share count's declining. Earnings, are, earnings per share will mm-hmm. conceivably go up. Mm-hmm. Um, also, companies are paying out better dividends, special dividends as well. So, you're, you know, you're, there, there are lots of um, good, good companies out there. We like larger companies addressing large growth markets. Smaller businesses, they're nice businesses, a lot of them, but their growth is often constrained. They're, they're addressing a niche market um, where, where it's hard to see how big they're going to get. Remember, an AIM company that's worth 500, 600 million can still be a small company if it's worth 3 billion. Mm. In, the, in the context of the global stock markets, that's still a pretty small company. Likewise, one in a billion, it could be worth five, and it's still actually a relatively small business. Um, so we, we like we like the, the bigger businesses on AIM generally. They're more liquid. It's easier to buy and sell their shares. Almost the, the pricing is more rational as well. You see some of the smaller ones, you think they, you know, conceivably a lot of them are value traps and can can be value traps. I'm generalizing, but um, and there is there are pockets of value. Mm. But I think you have to be careful and, and think through what's the longer term. And we like holding stocks for the long term. Mm. We don't like to chop and change. It's very difficult when you're managing money in the inheritance planning space to chop and change. Let's return to the point you made about um, ASOS as an example of a company that, that's left. It was a long while in coming, that has to be said, because I think that was the first one billion pound yeah. market cap company, wasn't it, on AIM? And everybody thought at the time, why doesn't it move on to the main market? It took a while to get there. But in fact, this has now seen a, a path that's becoming well-trodden, isn't it, with some of these larger companies? Yeah, I think, I think the, the, you know, the greater risk is not just moving to the main market. A lot of companies have said they're happy to, to stay on AIM. ASOS ironically moved when it was a fraction of it off its peak. Yeah, I mean, it seems yeah. an odd time to have moved when mm. it... When, when its heyday was mm. seemingly a couple of years ago, but, yeah. uh, but, but it took a decision. And other companies have actually committed to remaining on AIM. But another one is going to be leaving AIM, mm. um, but not going on the main market. It's, it's got a dual listing already on, um, on uh, US NASDAQ, a company called Abcam, being a huge AIM success story. Uh, so it's ditching the London markets completely? Absolutely. It's had, a, it's had an ADS on the NASDAQ, clearly sees that its future is mm-hmm. among the US investor base. Uh, it's, it's been, as I said, a big success on, big success on AIM. And um, it's, it's a shame to see it go. Uh, we had to sell it out of our um, uh, AIM portfolio service in some time ago when it, when it dual listed, but in the life sciences sector. So, you know, n- nice business, and, you know, sorry to see it go. Uh, we need more of these 
you know, back on aim. These type mm. of businesses are what aim's been lacking, really. Mm. And there seems to be little attraction for many of them to, to list on aim or for stock markets in general. And of course, well, exactly. That's right. I was going to say it's, it's a government issue, isn't it? Uh, there's got to be incentives to keep people yeah, yeah, here in London absolutely. and make sure yeah. there's the uh, advantages in, yeah. in running a, a small business like this. Um, of course, companies has also leave because they're taken over. The success of the company means they quite often become a target. It has. EMIS was a stock we held in our portfolios, provides software to the healthcare sector in the UK. Nice business, a consistent performer. Um, we've held them a, a long time and you can see the share price there. It's yeah. leapt up on, on a deal. It's taken a long time to conclude. It still hasn't left. Um, I'm surprising why it's taking so long. Um, if something, obviously, if it doesn't go through at this point, which seems unlikely, you know, the shares will clearly fall off. Um, but yeah, a, a nice little business. But again, why, why, why are shareholders taking a, a cheap price? This sort of business should be encouraged to remain on the market. Mm. Big institutions should be supported, not saying, oh, we'll quit, take a quick buck and let's go off and find another one. You, you're tough to, it's tough to find another company, we would say, of this quality on AIM or the main market. And you're, the institutions are not supporting it, they're just taking their money. It has to be said, though, that uh, boards of companies are under an obligation to consider offers for the business. And, Absolutely. And if there is something that com comes to the table that is in shareholders' best interest, they have to accept it. So it's not a question of refusing these things. We would say a more adventurous board as well, well or, or a more point taken. Um, ambitious board, yeah. If they see an acquisition there, well, can they not do this mm. through their own mm. vehicle? It's a listed vehicle. It's on mm. the stock market for a reason, not just to be taken over. It's supposed to be using the market to, to for, for corporate activity as well, mm. Um, mm. Which, which it can do. Mm. Um, let's let's look um, at some more um, large companies. You've brought along um, two or three you wanted to take a look at. Uh, Jet2 PLC, still involved in this? Are you exposed Absolutely. To I think uh, if... If it's the right term, I think Jet2 of all the airlines, it's a leisure travel group, mm -hmm. it's got its own airline, it's had a, as far as it could be said to be, a good pandemic. Mm. Um, I mean, it's, it seems to have handled the situation pretty well. It's safeguarded its cash, it raised a bit more capital as well. It's a good big, got a big founder ownership that owns a huge stake in it. Um, we think it could be one of the winners from this horrible situation because it's done what a lot of should, companies in its you know space should have done is is continue to support its staff and support mm -hmm. its cu customer base i think it was the only travel group not to cancel any flights during this the hiatus over the summer right. amongst all of them clearly it's it's smaller than the ryanairs and the easy mm -hmm. jets but mm -hmm. it's done a, a pretty good job and we think it it, it, it could go on to much greater things easy jets is now trying to push its own holiday business but it, just at first glance, if you look at the two sites, I mean, it's not a patch on Jet 2s, right. and, and the customer service proposition it seems far better. Mm. Uh, I mean, we, we uh, booked a holiday with Jet 2. They almost had too many people supporting yeah, you. It was great yeah. to yeah. see. They, want, they wanted to make sure you were looked after. Yeah. yeah. Um, talking about the pandemic, uh, veterinary services was a really good area during the pandemic, wasn't it? Because a lot of people had pets, and indeed a lot of people bought into the, the pet ownership, yep. uh, which uh, seems to have unraveled a little bit. But CVS Group is an interesting one. Um, we talk a lot about some of the bigger companies, and a lot of them make the headlines like Decker and so forth. But these are sometimes under the cover. But CVS is actually quite a large company, isn't it? Yeah, it's a one and a half billion market cap business. It's a 500 odd veterinary practice, it's a big, big business. Um, it, it unraveled a bit a few years ago because it was just buying, buying, buying and not thinking how to grow organically as well. Mm. But new management team came in and uh, really settled things down. It's investing more and more in, in its existing portfolio, still making a few acquisitions, but not as quite as manic as it was. It's got a it's got some interest in Europe as well, but it hasn't really done anything with them. I think in Holland, it's got a few surge um, practices. But we like it, as you said, long-term beneficiary po population going mm. up. And we haven't, we haven't seen the boost from that yet. Remember, these are young pets. It's more elderly pets that need more veterinary mm. support. Mm. Uh, it, it covers every single aspect. It's got pet crematoria, laboratories. Right. It's, own, it's got its own animed online dispensary as well. Mm. So it really covers every aspect of the, the veterinary journey. Uh, hopefully that a lot of people won't have to make too often because it's getting yeah. quite expensive. A lot you, of these you, rivals have been bought up as well. You invested? Absolutely, right, yeah. A, we've got fund. all these stocks in our portfolio. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Okay, let's talk about another one now. RWS Holdings, another one uh, where you've listed in this large cap. This is a, a 
more tech, more of a tech company, isn't it? It has. It, it's the patent translation, localization business, intellectual property mm. so it's a services business. The shares have been absolutely smacked. Yeah. Reasonably new CEO on board. It made a big acquisition since then. It's a bit of SDL, a main market company. Actually, it was ironic. RWS and AIM company acquiring SDL, a business on the main market, mm -hmm. yet the combined entity remained on AIM. Uh, it's probably no accident because the founder, well, the, one of the founder shareholders of RWS is quite elderly. Now. He's probably holding the shares for IHT planning. Never sold a share, <laughs> I don't think. That's He's never sold a share in yeah. the business. And now it's, this is a, what is it now, 1.3 billion market cap business. But yeah, we, we think it looks decent value. Cash flow is good. Um, it's, you get a lot of foreign exchange impact on this business, so shareholders right. might be unsettled because you've got a lot of swings on the FX. But it's been a consistent performer over the years, and look at it, it's really sold off a lot. A bit mm. of a bounce lately. But a, a quality aim company, large aim company, addressing a large market that could even get a lot bigger still. Yeah. Um, and your final one is an asset management business, Impacts. Um, it's a specialist in as much as it's what is in the sustainable. Yeah, call it uh, any. As I say, if I'm you want to better some ESG. Yeah. yeah so yeah, it's yeah. very much been a, a pioneer in that space. Mm. It's got some good strategies. Clearly, it's all asset management businesses are geared plays on the performance of the stock market. They earn fees on the basis of their funds under management. Should those decline, their fees will decline. Well, clearly, you've had a big sell-off. Uh, notably, in the, the you've had a, the sin stocks have had their return a little mm -hmm. bit, haven't you? The so-called value value yeah. brigade stocks, if that's the right term, um, and impacts has been affected. But margins are great, real pioneer, terrific, terrific business, loads of cash. It just put out a special dividend. I think its dividend was up about thirty percent, I think, on the prior year, and we think it's an interesting position. Um, it could, it, as it accumulates cash, it could pay out e even more to shareholders unless it's got a Going to have a better use for them, better use for the cash. But we like it. If you if you like the the asset management space, mm. again, we think there's value there. You think market's going to come back. Asset managers, as I say, are a good play on that. Mm. And this has the the specialism. It's not a generalist manager. It's le under less threat from passive in, in, um, investment brigade. So it's it, it's well placed. Mm. Founders still involved as well. We love businesses where you've got some founder key ownership in there as well. Mm. Yeah. Um, just before we, we, we leave this chat about 2023, and we've spoken about how you feel about uh, about next year, um, the risks as you perceive them next year, we don't know yet whether or not the Bank of England has stopped raising interest rates. Well, we know it going to the back end of the year, we're still expecting more. I mean, that itself is, is, a, is a headwind to markets. What do you see as the risks next year? Mm. Generally, not necessarily for AIM, but as an asset manager, what, what do you... Well, I think, I think, I think the greatest for? risk for AIM as a whole is they need to attract new companies. Mm -hmm. So from an asset, and I think that applies to the stock market as a whole. I mean, what has, there's been a huge decline in the number of companies on global stock markets. Mm -hmm. um, right. You've had the private equity boys, sort of girls, capturing a lot, of, a lot of activity. Will that continue? I think there's a great place for the stock market mm -hmm. still. So we, we need to see new businesses. We need to see a mechanism that attracts companies to list. Don't burn them with too much regulation, all this rubbish. Uh, you know, you, you yeah. need to give them some yeah. flexibility. Don't burden them with 20 different board members who know, mm. you know this and that about everything. So I think, I think that's key. And we'd like, that needs to be encouraged, I think. But um, we've got inflationary concerns. Um, we are trying to, to invest in companies that uh, have a greater pricing power than others. Clearly, that's not going to always be the case, but you, you know, you, you try and look at that as well. Companies that have cash, that have strong balance sheets, or or reliable cash flow. We spoke about an airline earlier sitting on a huge amount of cash, yeah. albeit it's going to be ordering some more planes and things that you know mm. needs that cash mm. for. But uh, that's a key issue. I don't think you, you don't want to be going into a higher interest rate environment and a great debt no, around your neck, no, do you? Yeah. Okay, look, uh, Chris, thanks so much indeed for joining us. It's a pleasure, Thank you. Thank pleasure you. to catch up with you in 2022. Looking ahead to 2023 there for the A market. That's Chris Boxall from Fundamental Asset Management.